Good day, grade 12 learners. Welcome to today's business studies lesson. My name is Sidi Sotlaka. This program is funded by the Northern Cape Department of Education, broadcast by Parama Research and Development. Today we look into a main topic we call the business role, which is assessed in your paper two. And the subtopic we look into is team performance and conflict management. This is a revision one on your team performance and conflict management. Learning outcomes, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to discuss the criteria of a successful team performance. You should further be able to outline or explain or discuss the characteristics of a successful team performance. You should also be able to discuss the stages of team development and also be able to discuss or elaborate on the importance of team dynamic theories in improving the team performance. And then also be able to mention or discuss the causes of conflict in the workplace and also be able to identify those causes of conflict from a given scenario or statement. This is to say how it would come during the exam. You should be able to identify the causes of conflict from a given scenario or statement. And then you should also be able to explain or advise businesses on how they should handle conflict in the workplace or what we consider to be conflict resolution steps or techniques. You should further be able to elaborate on the meaning of grievancy to say what do we mean by grievancy and you should also be able to explain or discuss the correct procedure to deal with grievancy in the workplace and be able to identify or name the following difficult personality from a given scenario statement which we'll discuss during the lesson and be able to suggest or recommend ways in which a business can deal now with the difficult personalities that would have been identified and then explain or suggest ways in which a business can deal with difficult employees in the workplace then that would be our revision which covers everything under the lesson then in our previous lessons or pre-knowledge we were looking into your typical exam questions on your stages of team development remember your stages of team development include that the stage forming the stage storming norming performing and mourning we discussed that and we also looked into possible ways in which the assessor can come up with uh, the exam questions to say how can they structure the exam questions on those stages of team performance and the question is to say now in our baseline just to check what makes a team to be successful what makes a team to be successful is teamwork hence what we are going to discuss aspects such as the criteria of a successful team performance and we will also look into the characteristics of a successful team all those aspects covers or would educate us about what makes a team to work hence we say teamwork makes the team to be successful and then terminology that is important for our lesson is the term team. Team refers to a group of people who work together to achieve a common goal. And then we also have the term criteria. Criteria refers to guidelines used to make a decision or a standard used to assess something. We also have the term mutual. Mutual refers to two people who share the same feeling. And then we also have interpersonal attitudes, which refers to how two or more people interact with one another. And then we have the term commitment, which refers to keeping to a promise or an arrangement. And then cooperation or collaboration, it refers to willingness to cooperate in a team to achieve objectives. Then Let's look now into your criteria of a successful team. Before we start with the criteria, let's go back to the terminology. What is a criteria? A criteria is a guideline used to make a decision or a standard to be used to assess something to say. This is basically what would be used to check whether something is good or bad. That is your criteria. So criteria of a successful team include the following it includes your interpersonal attitudes and behavior it also includes shared values together with communication and 
collaboration so basically for a team to be successful it has to have these criteria and it has to apply these criteria in a particular way and then when it applies them in that particular way then we consider that team to be successful let's start with the first criteria which is your interpersonal attitudes and behavior which talks about how team members should interact with one another team members in a team must have a positive attitude of support and motivation towards each other so that they show that they have interpersonal attitudes and behavior furthermore they should also stay positive to say if whatever mistake happens and is done by one of the members they should be positive and motivate each other and support each other furthermore they must be committed towards achieving a common goal that shows that there's interpersonal attitudes and behavior in that particular team and then another criteria we consider to be very important for a successful team is shared values with shared values we are talking about the idea that team members should show respect towards other members despite their differences because in a team there will be a group of uh, people who play different roles and each and everyone has to be respected for the role they play and then that is your shared values furthermore they need to show respect for the knowledge and skills of other members then we also have another criteria which is communication communication is very very key in a team being successful the first aspect you need to look into in a team is the idea that there should be a clear set of processes for teamwork which will ensure that every team member understands his or her role meaning a clear set of processes refers to how the team is going to do things so that has to be clear so that everyone would understand their role and responsibility and then another one is to say team members must have good communication so that quick decisions can be made that is also a criteria that would make a team to be successful there has to be proper communication between the members of a team so that information can flow very fast and that would allow for quick decision making to be done and then another one is open discussions lead to effective solutions for problems so there should be open discussions about whatever hiccups or whatever the team has experienced whether it worked well or not that should be discussed so that there can be solutions and the discussions should be open meaning all members should be honest during that communication process so that is your 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 communication over there then we look into cooperation and collaboration with the focus there becomes the idea that all members should take part in decision making because cooperation and collaboration means everyone wants to work together with the other members and then clearly defined goals must be set meaning clearly defined goals we are talking about the idea that the goals of the team must be set in collaboration meaning everyone should be included in the process of setting the goals so that all members know exactly what is to be achieved that would allow teamwork because every member in a team would understand what they are working for and what is the main objective so that they don't think about uh, themselves as individuals but they think about the team and the team achieving the objectives those are your criteria of a successful team so for us to say a team is successful they need to show your cooperation and collaboration they need to show a criteria communication be able to communicate with members they need to show shared values which talks about respecting the skills and abilities of other members and they also need to show interpersonal attitudes and behavior which would show motivation and support for other members if anything is to happen wrong then we move to criteria of a successful team what would make a team to be successful these are the criteria successful teams share a common goal as team members are part of the process of setting goals for the group so a successful team would have now members who are part and parcel of setting the goal to say this is what we want to achieve a team's goal cannot be set by one member it has to be set by the members 
of a team, meaning the group that is involved in doing the work should be there in the process of making the objective or setting the goal. And then that is what we talk about. You cannot set a goal as an individual. As we see there, we have a group of four. The group of four has to set the objectives together or set the team goals together so that they are able to achieve them successfully. And then another one is to say there is a climate of respect and honesty in a successful team. That's another character. They need to be honest with each other so that they learn from each other, so that they develop from their mistakes. And then another one is that team members enjoy open communication and deal with items of conflict immediately. So there's open communication about anything that may lead to any conflict so that they are able to deal with that conflict very quickly. But when one member is not honest in the process of communicating, it means they can end up now having whatever uh, issues. And then when, when they have those issues, because they were not open in solving those issues, that will lead now to another aspect that can lead to the team's failure. And then we also have team members enjoying open communication. That is an, a, a good uh, characteristic as well. Balance the knowledge and skills to achieve the objectives. A good team should balance the skills and knowledge of its members. You cannot have members who have the same skill. You need to have members with different skills so that the knowledge can be balanced within the team. Then they need to share a set of team values and implement group decisions. As I said, in a team, there's no I, but there's a we, meaning whatever decision that is taken, group members have to be involved. Hence, now we talk about sharing, meaning they need to share everything that happens in the organization and they need to share every resource so that they can share every decision that they make as well. Then as we proceed, team value, teams value the contributions of individual members and reach consensus on their differences. So team members are able to reach now what understanding because now they understand each other and they know what each member can contribute to the group, which allows for the team to be successful. Now we move to stages of team development. We have five stages of team development. So basically with your stages of team development, we're talking about the process of making or coming up or developing a team. When maybe there was no team at all, now the manager has a role to come up or select members and allow them to form a group which makes them a team. So those the, 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 the stages that are included in developing a team is your stage that we call forming, we also have a stage called storming together with the stage we call norming together with the stage performing and the last one is moaning so let's start with the first aspect of your stages of team development the stage the first stage when a team is being developed is called forming so what happens during that stage is that individuals obtain information and impressions about each other because this is the beginning stage of the team and then teams are comfortable and polite with each, uh, with each other during this stage and then that is the beginning stage now hence you can see the start there on the picture the members are new hence they are trying to form impressions about each other and try to understand the task to say what is going to be done in the task at hand then we also have storming during the stage storming now, teams go through a period of conflict after formation and then team members oppose each other's ideas and then there may be power struggles for the position of team leader. So that can lead now during that storming stage, it means now the team members now are trying to now there's a conflict due to maybe the idea that some members want to be considered to be what now to be team leaders some members don't think the task should be done in a particular way hence whatever idea that is being given by other members is not considered which leads to conflict so that is your storming and it happens within the team it means team members within that team are fighting with each other that is during your what now storming there's conflict after formation team members oppose each other's ideas on how the task should be done then 
we have another stage called norming or settling or reconciling now team members during this stage come to an agreement and reach consensus and then rules and responsibilities have or are clearly defined and accepted by the members of the team after that formation after that storming after that conflict you know team members agree with each other on how they're going to do things so that is your norming settling or reconciling stage then we have performing stage or working as a team towards a goal. Now, during this stage, the team members are aware of the strategies and aims of the team, and they have direction without the interference from the leader. So during performance, uh, performing stage, every member of the team is now functional within the team. They know what to do. They don't need the team leader to help them maybe or support them because during the stage, everyone understands the task at hand. Then that is your performing stage. Team members are aware of the strategies and the aims of the team. But then we also have the last now stage, which is, which is called the adjourning or moaning stage. This is a stage where the team is about to dissolve but the task must be completed before the project ends now breaking up the team might be what traumatic as team members may find it difficult to perform as individuals once again that is your now a general moaning because remember teams are developed for projects and projects are temporary they are not permanent so maybe if there's a, a one-year project that has to be completed a team of five can be now uh, uh, developed meaning a group of five people will be working on that project so when that project is about to end that is now your adjourning or morning stage so it becomes traumatic because now individuals are no longer used to working as uh, 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 individuals or they are no longer are used to working alone so that becomes traumatic for those members so those were your stages of team development now we look into the importance of team dynamic theories team dynamic theories explain how effective teams work or operate so this basically is a theory about how teams should operate and how effective things uh, how effective teams should do things another one is that businesses should be able to locate tasks according to the roles of the team members meaning a task should be given to a member with the skill or abilities and then another one is that team members can maximize performance as tasks are allocated according to their abilities or skills this is to say if a business gives a worker a task and a worker who has the skills to do that particular task it would allow the worker to maximize their performance which would make the business more money or would increase the production of the business because they have given a task to someone with their abilities so that's what we mean with that point and then team members with similar strengths may operate or may compete for team tasks or responsibilities that best suits their abilities or competencies so if it happens that there is a task and there are two workers who have the same skills in that particular team they can be given now a task and say the, 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 the manager would say let them compete to check who is better than the other one so that the task can be given to the one with more competency and this theory assists team leaders to understand that the personality types of team members so that the tasks are assigned more effectively so this theory will understand the leader to understand the personality of their employees so that they give a task based on personality because some of some are some jobs or some tasks would need a personality that is suitable or some customers would need a particular personality someone who's able to interact someone with a particular emotional intelligence to deal with any challenge that may occur and conflict may be minimized when team members perform different tasks because when team members perform similar tasks there will always be a different in judgment on how something should be done because they are doing the same thing it doesn't mean they will think it should be done the same way which can lead to conflict when it comes to professional judgment then the meaning of conflict 
we start with conflict now we are done with team when we're looking into conflict conflict refers to a clash of opinions or ideas in the workplace it is a disagreement between two or more parties in the workplace then this is your conflict then we also have the meaning of grievance what do we mean with the term grievance this is when an employee has a problem or a complaint in the workplace unlike with conflict this is a clash of opinion between two or more members but with grievance the employee now has a problem or complaint in the workplace this can be due to what for example, it can be caused by discrimination, it can be caused by unfair treatment or poor working conditions. Now, this is a complaint about the working conditions. This is a complaint about discrimination that is taking place in the workplace. It can be now considered to be grievance. Now, causes of conflict in the workplace. This can cause conflict in the workplace. One, workers may have different personalities or backgrounds. That can lead to conflict, lack of recognition for good work. For example, employees may not be appreciated for the extra hours worked to meet the deadline. That can lead to conflict because emotionally that employee doesn't feel appreciated. Lack of clarity regarding employees' roles and responsibilities can lead to conflict because one day the employees told that they should do this the other day they are told to or they are given another task that can lead to conflict because it means they will not be able to maximize their performance they will always do mistakes which can lead to conflict and then another one is lack of communication between management and workers can also lead to conflict and then leadership style used for example, an autocratic manager may not consider the, 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 the workers' inputs, which can lead to conflict because some workers may become fed up and decide to say they want to be heard and do that in a way that would be unprofessional, which can lead to conflict as well. But then when you look into conflict resolution steps to say ways in which a business can handle conflict or a manager would handle conflict, one, the manager would have to acknowledge that there is conflict in the workplace, meaning they need to see that there is conflict in the workplace. They need to further identify what was the cause of conflict, referring to the above aspect we just mentioned. And then you should also they should also arrange a meeting between conflicting parties to say what is now the cause and now allow them to talk during that meeting and then during that meeting each party must be given now what an opportunity to express his or her what opinions and then number three is to say blame shifting should be avoided and a joint effort should be made so that in that meeting blame shifting should be avoided and a joint effort should be made to solve the conflict between the parties that are having the conflict and then brainstorm possible ways of solving the what the, the, the conflict and then also provide opportunities for parties to agree on the best solution during that meeting and then select and implement the best solution and then source experts in handling conflict from outside if those solutions that were applied inside the organization did not work or if as a manager you fail to solve the conflict get someone from outside hence we say source an expert on in, in handling conflict from outside the business now let's look into the difference between conflict and grievance grievance is when an employee is unhappy and has a problem or a complaint in the uh, workplace but conflict is a clash of opinions ideas or view points in the workplace then it is and uh, now grievance it is when an individual or group has a work related issue while when we look into conflict it is a disagreement between two or more parties in the workplace and then when we look into grievance as well examples that can cause grievance is discrimination and unfair treatment or poor working conditions while when we look into examples that can cause conflict it can be lack of trust miscommunication personality clashes or difference in values now let's see how one can deal with the correct procedure to deal with grievance now how should an employee 
deal with grievances? How should the business deal with grievances? So the first step is to say when the employee has a complaint, what should the employee do? An employee must verbally report the grievance to his or her supervisor who needs to resolve the issue within three to five working days. That's one. Number two, should the employee and the supervisor fail to resolve the grievance, the employee may take it to the next level of management. So should that supervisor fail to solve the matter within three to five days, the employee should take that matter to the next level of management. Now, the employee must lose the grievance in writing or complete a grievance form. And then another one is that a grievance hearing must be held with all relevant parties present that um, that should be the next level of manager that should be the supervisor and the worker and minutes of the meeting must be recorded and any resolution passed must be recorded on a formal grievance form then as we proceed should the employee still not be satisfied then he or she could refer the matter to the highest level of management and thereafter during the meeting as well there should be what now minutes of this meeting should be recorded and decisions must be recorded on a what grievance form with the highest level of management and then should the employee still not be satisfied he or she may refer the matter to the ccma who will make the final decision on the matter so this is to say if the supervisor failed if the uh, next level manager this should be your middle manager and then if the highest level as well has failed then the employee takes the matter outside of the organization because we know that within the business we have three levels of management which is the low the middle and the top so if the top manager has failed to solve the grievance or the employee is still not happy with how the grievance is being dealt with then they can take the matter to ccma who will make the final decision on the matter then the matter can be referred to the labor court on appeal if the employee is not satisfied with the decision taken by the ccma meaning the ccma will have to take that decision should they still not be happy until they take the matter to the labor court on appeal to appeal the decision taken by ccma and that that is basically the end the first part is to say the employee would the summary version of the grievance procedures to say the employee would have to report the matter verbally from the to the supervisor should they not be happy they move to the next level of management with the middle manager and there everything has to be recorded on a grievance form minutes would be held or a minute would be recorded as well of the meeting and resolution that has been taken should they still not be happy there the grievance is taken to top now and then during the top again there is a meeting a meeting will have minutes around recorded of what has transpired and whatever solution that has been achieved and should the employee still not be happy with the internal way or the internal way the internal way of dealing with the matter they take the matter to ccma and then should they not be happy with the decision taken by ccma they take the matter to labor labor court labor court on appeal to try and appeal the decision that was taken by the ccma that is the correct way to do or deal with the grievance procedure now we talk about difficult personalities or employees the first part we are going to look into is the types of personalities that are difficult and to say how can a business deal with that type of personality and come up with strategies to solve that challenges that can be brought by that particular personality that is being difficult and we'll also look into discussing ways in which to deal with difficult employees now we have the following personalities that can be difficult we have a, a complainer an indecisive individual an overagreeing individual a negative individual we have an expert a quiet individual together with an aggressive individual so ways in which a business can deal with for instance a complainer as a difficult personality the business or the manager would have to listen to the complaints but should not acknowledge the person who's complaining 
and then they should interrupt the situation and move towards the problem solving process when they are dealing with a type of personality who is a complainer and then an individual who's an indecisive in their nature a business or the manager would have to deal with such an individual by helping them to make the decision or to solve the problem and also by staying in control and emphasizing the importance of making a decision to them and then when you look into an over agreeing individual the business would have to be firm and they should not let them make what uh, promises that they cannot keep because these individuals are over agreeing even if a task will not be complete they will take it and then they will fail to submit on time and then the business or the manager would have to follow up on this individual and then ways to deal with a negative individual is to listen to them but do not agree with them and then be firm with them and do not let them throw the supervisor into their negative thinking or negative thoughts because these are individuals who can be able to influence everyone to be negative or not agree to doing something and then when you look into an expert do not accuse them of being incorrect and then know your facts as a business or as a manager when you are dealing with such an individual that is how you deal with an expert and an individual who's quite a manager would have to wait for their response and restrict the time of the discussion and then do not fill their silence with weight when you're dealing with now an individual or a worker who's quiet and then when you're dealing with a worker who's aggressive do allow them time to speak and blow off and be firm but do not attack them that is how you deal with now an aggressive individual then ways in which a business now would deal with a difficult now employee in the workplace not considering the type of personality we are just talking about an employee is difficult the business or the manager would have to identify the type of personality which is creating the problem they should also meet privately with the difficult employee so that there is no distraction from other employees and then make the intentions or reasons for the actions known so that the difficult employee may feel at ease do not judge the person, but try to understand his or her intentions or why he or she reacts in a certain way. And then a deadline should be set for improving the bad or difficult behavior. Maybe they are never, they are never going to submit on time. Maybe they are never going to comply. So maybe they are never going to wear a face mask. Try to discuss with them and maybe have a conversation deal with them, identify their personality uh, type to say, are they complainers? Are they negative? Are they quiet? Are they complainers? So that you are able to come up with a solution to say, how can you deal with such individuals? So those are ways in which a business can deal with a difficult employee. And it should be clear that there's a difference between ways in which a business deals with difficult personalities. Personalities would be linked to a particular personality. Expect, quiet, aggressive, uh, a complainer indecisive over agreeing but when you are looking into dealing with difficult employees in the workplace it is it should come in this way when you respond you should provide sentences that are basically related to dealing with the entire uh, scenario or difficult individual in the workplace so that is our lesson let's go through our summary we discussed the criteria of a successful team performance. We also looked into outlining or discussing the criteria of a successful or the characteristics of a team successful team performance. We also looked into discussing stages of team development together with elaborating on the importance of team dynamic theories in improving uh, team performance. We also mentioned or discussed the causes of conflict in the workplace and also identified the causes of conflict from a given scenario or statement. And and we also looked into explaining or advising businesses on how they should deal with conflict in the workplace. And then we also discussed the meaning of grievance together with the correct way to deal with uh, grievance in the workplace and identified difficult personalities together with uh, suggesting ways in which business can deal with those difficult personalities and explained or we provided suggestions on how to deal with difficult employees in the workplace. So that is the end of our lesson. Remember to keep yourself safe, 
study more it will make you healthier and it will make you more successful because your education is a pillar to a lot of things to your emotional intelligence to your uh, social behavior in the community so it is very very important keep well goodbye